Hi, welcome back. When you think of Germany, what do you think of? Maybe you think of the beautiful landscape. Maybe you think of the beautiful castles. Maybe you think of beer. Maybe you think of the beautiful women. I don't think of any of these when I think of Germany. I only think of Gletscherprise or Glacial Pinch, kind of. Glutcher Prisa is arguably one of the world's most popular nasal snobs, and it's not only popular in Germany, it's also popular across the world, especially in Europe. This stuff seems to get everything right. It is easy to take because of its larger, more forgiving coarse grind. It has more moisture than other snuffs, and it is mentholated, camphorated, has eucalyptus in it, and has a mysterious flavor. Ooh. It's also really, really cheap compared to other snuffs on the market. Provincial snuffs tend towards uh, very, very cheap. Now, if you're an American like myself, this stuff is actually pretty expensive. It's about double the price on Mr. Snuff or any competing snuff vendors online. And then you have to get it imported from Europe. And the importation is where this stuff really kills. Snus buyers in America already bemoan that they have to pay, oh, 20, 30, 40, sometimes $60 on a $200 order. But the snuff taker suffers much, much more, especially now since the shipping prices have been increased on nasal snuffs. Nothing they can do about it. It is all legislation on both sides. Kind of sucks, but. That means there is only one option for the viewer of this channel, and that is to make our own. The rough recipe comes from Snuff House user Sunny Day, who very graciously posted a spreadsheet that lists all of the ingredients of different German snuffs. So you have Bernard, you have Peugeot, and you have some errant smaller brands. This was posted a while ago, but Glutcha Prisa has been on the market for a pretty long time, so we lucked out, I guess. This is going to be the longest recipe that I have ever followed. There is quite the list of ingredients. I will post them on screen and leave it there for a couple seconds for you to peruse. We have water. We have mineral oil or liquid paraffin. And this is my first time using mineral oil. You do want to get the food safe stuff. It's not that difficult to get a hold of. Now, an interesting thing about Glecha Prise is that it is a snuff schmaltzler hybrid kind of. All of Perschel's schmaltzlers, that was the water going off, that's another ingredient. All of Perschel's schmaltzlers have some percentage of fat in them. In the olden days, especially if you watched my traditional Schmaltzler video, you'll know that they added usually clarified butter or ghee or Butterschmaltz. But nowadays, for just stability purposes, they will add mineral oil. This also frees up what they're able to do with Schmaltzlers and Schmaltzler snuff hybrids. It means that you're not uh, beholden to a heavy cake baked goods, dark tobacco taste, you can get creative with what you flavor this stuff with. And I think that's the place that this product was born out of. But luckily it's not too hard to find the food grade stuff. I live in South Eastern United States, so I was able to pick this stuff up at the Publix, but any grocery store should have it, even in Europe. The next ingredient is potassium carbonate. You will know that well as our alkalizer from our snooze videos. Here is a picture of a bag I bought from Amazon for about $10, and this will last me the rest of my life. So, not concerned about the price at all. Next, we need six grams of salt. I recommend you get un-iodized sea salt. You can use rock salt in it, and I'm almost certain manufacturers do. There's no truly pure salt unless you go with laboratory concocted, uh, push the sodium into the chlorine, and you end up with pure, pure salt. Uh, salt is going to have some impurities anyways, but sea salt tends to have less of them, and the ones that it does have tend to be a little bit more forgiving to the cook, whether it's food or tobacco. So go with some sea salt. I'm using a Lessie brand. Next ingredient we have is undisclosed flavor. 
This puzzled me. <laughs> this puzzled me for some time. It's the only flavor that isn't listed. It's the only ingredient that isn't listed. And this really could be anything. Flavor could mean an essential oil. Flavor could mean a, a particulate matter that goes into the snuff, like ground up cloves, imagine. But there is a pretty big hint thanks to all the reviewers online who have reviewed Gletcha Prisa. Whether they like it or they don't like it, they all say that it contains a woody note. Perschel describes this woody note as Columbia oil or Columbia oil. That doesn't seem to exist. <laughs> At least not uh, in a form that would be named as Columbia oil. That's pure buzzword. But we can tell from the final sniff that these reviewers take that it is a woody note. And there are a couple of good candidates. There is fir oil, there is pine oil, um, and just anything that smells woody, fresh, anything like that that has a strong wooden note. I believe it to be cedar wood, or not believe it to be cedar wood, it's probably fir oil, but fir oil is kind of hard to find in a food safe context. And I believe so long as we have a woody note somewhere in the mix, we'll end up with Gletcha Prisa. And you'll see why, because the next couple of ingredients are very, very minty. We have propylene glycol, of course, this is a humectant that keeps the snuff fresh for a long period of time. Not using too much of that in here. But then we have menthol. I'm gonna be using menthol crystals that I'll dissolve in the water we're using in the recipe. We have camphor. This is also my first time working with camphor. It comes in these little tiny blocks. You do want to go with refined camphor or a camphor that is as pure as you can get. And typically this stuff is distilled from a tree or made out of turpentine, synthesized out of turpentine with some other ingredients. But usually because of cost efficiency, it is taken from different trees in the cinnamon family. This stuff has a very strong minty smell. If you are Latin American or you are European, you will recognize this stuff as the odor of Vicks VapoRub. Along with the next ingredient, which is eucalyptus oil, no stranger to European tobacco products. This stuff goes in a lot of different snooses and a lot of different snuffs. So we'll be using some of that as well. Next two ingredients are pure chemical. We have sodium carbonate, and this acts as a secondary alkalizer. Wherever the potassium carbonate doesn't reach, I believe the sodium carbonate will. And it has some different flavor characteristics to potassium carbonate as well. And the last ingredient will be, again, kind of strange. It's listed as ammonia solution. Usually, from the manufacturer's perspective, this means an in-house ammonia solution in a certain concentration that they work with all the time. There are dissolved ammonia solutions that you can buy through the online avenues or through retail avenues, but these come in all sorts of percentages. If you've worked with Windex, you've worked with an ammonia solution. There are tons out there. Instead, what I'm gonna do is add some Salniac. And this will give us the ammonia note that we need while still being completely appropriate for the snuff. And it's going to give a little bit of a salmiac bite. If you like snuffs like that, or you like snooses like that, you know what I'm talking about. It's just a little pinch that comes from the ammonia being released in your nose as it contacts moisture. With that being said, the cook, if you want to call it that, is actually not too complicated. We're just going to mix all this shit together. We have yonder scale, my trusty cooking scale. Not too precise, not overly imprecise. I love it a lot. I will get a new one soon that can do milligram measurements, I promise. But because all of my recipes assume 100 grams of tobacco for easy divisibility and ease of measurement and purchase, I am sure you will find that you can kind of wiggle around a bit with these ingredients. Nothing in here is going to overpower the snuff or kill you in the measurements that we have on the ingredients list. They're all in, you know, real rational numbers. 
from one gram and above. So nothing will be too bad. Next, we need 40 grams of water. I'm gonna do something a little bit tricky with this water. And I'm going to melt the water soluble ingredients inside the water as we go, especially menthol, because menthol is a real pain in the ass to work with. You could use a coffee grinder if you wanted to only use a coffee grinder for menthol, or you could use a mortar and pestle. That's even worse because you're pushing menthol into the little nooks and crannies of the ceramic or the granite, and it'll never go away. If you've never worked with menthol before, it's actually kind of a cool chemical. They come in these waxy little crystals that release a little bit of menthol into your hands. Your hands smell really good, and if you're using hot water to dissolve them in, the whole house will soon smell like, I don't know, a spa. Going to add six grams of menthol. That is quite a lot, but not quite a lot for some snuffs. Oh, fucking hell. That's just what I need. Awesome, we'll assume that's half a gram. It's not too big of a deal. Menthol's actually pretty light stuff too. Some nasal snuff can contain in the neighborhood of 30% menthol by dry weight. So if you're afraid of the amount of menthol you're putting in, just remember that somewhere out there, somewhere in the craft, somebody is adding a shitload of menthol. That'll be six. That looks like six to me. While we're cooking, may as well chuck in my two grams of cam four. If your scale isn't accurate, you can always uh, just take a quarter of a cube if you're using the same brand as me, Dr. Sana. But I believe that other manufacturers are, well, they're not really manufacturers. They're just repackaging the cam four that a manufacturer uses. So there's no fear. Take a quarter of the block if your block is about an inch by half an inch and you'll be okay. Work fast. Next ingredient we're gonna need is 32 grams of mineral oil. Don't need too much of this stuff. And no snuff is gonna be as moist as any snooze. But be careful, because this stuff is tricky to get out. I'm gonna stop at... Oh, I'm gonna stop at 32. There we go. Just so we have things taken care of, I'm gonna prepare my alkali solution right now, which begins with six grams of potassium carbonate. I've added about five grams of just boiling water to this. You don't need to, but I find that just a little bit of water makes everything mix just a little bit better. It is absolutely not necessary, especially with snuffs, which must sit for a little bit of time anyways. But if you get this stuff dissolved from the get-go, usually you can use it as soon as it's all mixed in. Just a pinch more. There we go, six grams. And next will be one gram of sodium carbonate and one gram of ammonium carbonate. I am almost confident that you could leave this stuff out. The salmiac is probably completely optional. The sodium carbonate may be less so, but if you only have potassium carbonate on hand, you will only have to add another gram of potassium carbonate in exchange for the gram of sodium carbonate that you don't have. Funny how alkalizers work. All right, alkalizer going in. 
We're not using too much water, so there will still be some particulate, but no cloudiness. And I gotta tell you guys, this stuff already fucking reeks like ammonia, so... I think we made the right call with the carbonate or the chloride. Next, we're gonna add 12 grams of eucalyptus oil and our one gram of Atlas cedar wood. You could probably also leave the cedar wood or the undisclosed ingredient that you add at your discretion out of the recipe, it's not gonna hurt it at all. And I'll tell you what, this stuff already has a very, very Glitcherpreza smell, even without the eucalyptus, but the eucalyptus is gonna bring it to life. Quite a bit of this stuff. 12 grams Glitcherpreza is a eucalyptus dominant snuff after all. There we go. I'm gonna stop at 11 because that is almost surely 11.9. Better to err on the side of having a little bit too little with the minty stuff than having a little bit too much. We're gonna to top off that last gram with our cedar wood. So, to run down the list, for your sake and mine, we've added the water, we've added the mineral oil, we've added the potassium carbonate, the salt, the wood flavoring, the propylene glycol, the menthol, the camphor, the eucalyptus, the sodium carbonate, and the ammonium carbonate. All that's left to do is mix this up as well as we can and put it in a semi-airtight jar for about a week. I like to use these ball mason amber glass jars, but even a Ziploc bag will do. You don't have to be fancy or anything like that. It's snuff. Use what you can to get what you want. Welcome to the tasting corner. I am going to give our Glitcher Prisa a whiff and tell you if it matches the Glitcher Prisa of Herschel. Now I'll tell you this already, it smells a hell of a lot like Glitcher Prisa already. It's got big notes of eucalyptus, big notes of menthol, big notes of camphor, and a little bit of that wood odor. The tobacco base we're using is the same tobacco base that I used in the Siberia video. It's just 50-50 Burley, Virginia, I assume. Ground down with a coffee grinder. Let's have a whiff. Holy moly. Yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes, because there are little aberrances in the recipes that I do, I have to kind of lean past the ammonia to smell the snuff or the snooze that I want to smell. And after a couple days after the video, it tends to mild out and reach the pure taste. The Siberia video was kind of spot on from the beginning. I'm working on an Eton project which is slowly, day by day, becoming more and more chocolatey as the ammonia disappears and the roughness milds out. But this stuff is already there. I don't even know if I need to age this. Hang on. Let me... I'm really excited for this. Always take a fresh pinch. This is just good manners. It's a little moist. Going to boxcar, right up. Let's see how it goes. I trash can. Ooh. Hey! Whoa, wee, holy moly. I haven't had Glutcher Prisa in a while before this video and I've been taking little tiny pinches all day. That's a dead ringer, ladies and gentlemen. That is the real deal. Yes. We still need to wait a little bit for this stuff to kind of absorb all the moisture it can so that all of the water and mineral oil is evenly distributed to the tobacco, but 
Yeah, that's Clutcher Prize. I don't know what to tell you. If you're a fan of this stuff, and this can be pretty expensive, this is a 10 gram tap tin for about $4 on Mr. Snuff. With shipping, the price becomes absurd. We just made about 200 grams of it for about $5, I don't know, after all investments have been covered. So, yeah, money saving, ladies and gentlemen. All you need to do to finish this stuff up is wait for it to kind of dry a little bit and then receive it. I think the aging won't be necessary at all. Even the color is right there with Glutcher Parisa. Little tiny specks of some lighter tobacco that's probably little bits of vein that were in the tobacco base. That's nothing to worry about. As the alkali reacts with the tobacco over time, it's going to turn completely uniform. Wow, I'm gonna go for another pinch. This is, this is it, guys. It's very, very good thanks to Snuff House user Sunny Day for uploading the list of ingredients. Huge help. I actually like taking Glutcher Prisa off the knuckle as the Germans do. I think it works a little bit better, especially now since this stuff is over moisture by a tad. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Holy moly. Hey, even the cedar wood was the right call. I think they might be using cedar wood because that's, that's too close. That's too close for my own good. It really is. Holy smokes. Guys, if you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe. Go make your own delicious Glitcherpreza snuff. If you have any money or want to see me do anything, you can always join the Patreon for a couple bucks a month. Anything helps the channel, helps me buy tobacco to make stuff for you. If you have a little bit less or you want a cool t-shirt, absolutely buy from my Teespring. I will see you next time. Go in for another pinch.